we see this woman she sees this prophet who passed her by who came for a meal and now she decides to host him in her house and she sets up four pieces of furniture and these four pieces of furniture was to accommodate the man of God who was coming by and today I just wanted to prophetically look and digest just simple simple instruction of how these four pieces of furniture actually relate to four facets of your relationship with the Holy Spirit in your life I encourage you to take notes it's been proven that those who take notes have higher chance of escaping hell and making to heaven <laughs> no takers are history makers amen and short pencil is better than a long memory amen and so pull out your phones that take notes because uh, the notes will be on the screen I will give them in a capsule form meaning I'm not gonna uh, explain too much just given the capsule form uh, and then uh, you will just do the rest of it at home in Jesus name amen the first piece is the bed the bed speaks of intimacy and secondly the best the bed speaks of rest Everybody who has a bed at home, if you're single, this is a place of rest. If you're married, it's a place of rest and intimacy. And all the single people said, I have no, I have no idea what you're talking about. But for us who are single people, a bed is a place of rest. For people who are married, who have a covenant with somebody, a bed is not just a place of rest, it's also a place of intimacy. We have to understand as Christians, number one, that the Holy Spirit comes to live in us through salvation. He gets us through salvation, but we get the Holy Spirit through surrender. The Holy Spirit, I get the Holy Spirit when I get saved, but the Holy Spirit gets me when I surrender. That's why all Christians have the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit doesn't have all Christians because not all Christians surrender to the Holy Spirit they have. Are you with me? All Christians have a relationship, but not all Christians have intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Intimacy and relationship are two different things. For example, I am married to my wife. I have a relationship with my wife. It's a legal relationship. It's a covenant relationship. We are in the same house. We work in the same place. We sleep in the same bed. But it does not mean we are close all the time. In fact, just five days ago on our second day of conference actually on the third day of conference my wife sat on the bed of our house and she looked at me and she said we are so far from each other when I sat on the other side of the bed and every man understands what that means she's not talking about the distance from here to here and she's not talking about the facts that that our marriage is going through things she's just saying this that though we have a relationship we actually are not having intimacy right now many Christians have a legal relationship with the Holy Spirit they are sealed by the Holy Spirit they speak in tongues they are led by the Holy Spirit but the closeness to the Holy Spirit is not the same thing as having the Holy Spirit living in you for those of you who live with your parents, you know how it is, how you can be in the same house with your parents but be million miles apart. Because intimacy and relationship are not the same thing. You can have relationship and not have intimacy. But in order to have intimacy, we first start with the relationship. If somebody say amen. And so the intimacy with the Holy Spirit begins when we get the relationship and when we begin to surrender to the person of the Holy Spirit. Secondly is when I have intimacy, when you have closeness to the Holy Spirit, there will always be rest that will follow that. Rest is a result. Somebody say rest. No, not rest after you've eaten. Not that kind of rest. Not rest because you took antidepressants. 13% of people in America today are living on the pills to help them find freedom from anxiety. When I believe in reality, the secret to overcoming anxiety, the secret to overcoming depression, the secret to overcoming pressure and heaviness is not antidepressant pills. It's finding intimacy with the Holy Spirit because in intimacy with the Holy Spirit there is rest. And when you find rest, you find greater intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Can somebody say amen? amen. Say, when I find rest, I find intimacy. Say, when I find intimacy, I find rest every intimacy for those people who are married intimacy in marriage always happens behind closed doors and I'm going to share something practical 
that has helped me in my spiritual life. Prophet told one woman who had a problem and he said this to her. He says, you have a little bit of oil in your house. Go into your house, gather empty vessels and then shut the door behind you. And then the oil started to flow. Jesus said exactly the same thing in Matthew. He says, if you go into your secret place, talk to your father who is secret. But he says, before that, make sure you shut the door behind you. One of the reasons why many people do not find intimacy with the Holy Spirit is the intimacy is not found by striving. It's only found by surrender. And intimacy with the Holy Spirit cannot be found if the doors are not closed. And there's a door that each one of us have in our life. This door is called the door of distraction. It finds its fullest manifestation through iPhone, Android, Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, WhatsApp, Viber, and every other thing. And the problem that happens is this. We go into our secret place with God with our phone on. And as you are reading the Bible, you're seeing somebody liked your picture on Instagram. So you need to click which picture do they like. Because you remember that some pictures don't get a lot of likes. Because the algorithm changed on Facebook and Instagram and it's affecting our identity and our self-esteem. Next thing that happens, something else pops up. Somebody else just sends you a text message from work. Hey, can you bring me some coffee? And next thing that happens is that our focus is broken. In order to have intimacy in marriage, you have to keep the doors, doors locked. And in order to have intimacy with God, you have to learn to come to your prayer time without your phone. You may say, but that's what I read my Bible. That means put it on the airplane mode. Because you can't have intimacy if the door is open. For some people that door is something else but in order to have intimacy with the Holy Spirit you have to pay a price of putting away the distraction outside of your time with the Lord so that God is the only one who can communicate to you not just someone else. People can wait and it's important to make time with God the first thing in the morning. There's nothing wrong with praying in the night for those of you who are night owls and you wake up at 11 at night. Like you, you, you emotionally wake up, but something happens when you rise before the sun. Something happens before everybody else rises that you spend time with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I'm going to share something else about intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Is that in order to have closeness to the Holy Spirit, you have to learn to be silent more than you shout. And wait more than you wage war. The challenge that happens on the conference setting like this one or in the service as right now, there's a lot of shouting, there's a lot of yelling, there's a lot of screaming and that is good because that's a corporate environment. When you are in your private place, God speaks and God fills us through solitude and silence, not through shouting. The problem with many of us is this, is that the shouts are many times are empty. There is no substance inside and therefore these shouts, they never do any good except they strain our voice. When Israel was conquering Jericho, God told them, I want you to walk for seven days in silence. And then on the seventh time, on the seventh day, I want you to lift a shout. And when they lifted a shout, the walls fell. You know why? Because the shout was preceded with seven days of silence. The reason why many people are empty on the inside and their words have no power is because the words are not backed up with moments where you come before God. Well, you rest your soul like David says I wean my soul before God. You calm your soul and you let your thoughts, you let your emotions rage and connect to God and you let the voice from the inside your spirit connect with God. Not just tongues, not just words but things on the side and then you feel your cup, your spiritual soul begins to melt. You begin to be repaired inside. David says my soul is restored on inside and you walk out and it takes one shout and the walls begin to crumble. Why do walls crumble? Because your shout is not based on shout. It's based on a silence where God fills you up. The reason why a lot of times a lot of rebuking and commending doesn't move mountains is because the commending has not been preceded with the communion of the Holy Spirit with us. I love when people fall when we pray for them. But in my ministry, personal ministry, the Lord has told me, felt it. I felt like He told me. He said, Vlad, people are not going to fall when you pray for them. 
but I will bring down the walls in their life when you pray for them. That means that when they walk out, something will be different. And I said, Lord, I'll rather take that. But also, of course, it would be nice if people will fall. <laughs> There's other ministers that the, the grace of God is too much in their life for that, and that's good. But what my goal is, and I want it to be for you, is that in order for your words to have power, they have to be preceded by moments with God where only God's word is heard and yours is silenced. People sometimes come to God and say, well, you know, God needs to, honestly, there's nothing you have to say that God hasn't heard. Whatever you're going to say to God is not going to change God and pretty much is not going to change you. But what God is going to speak back to you is what really going to change. And place of intimacy with God is a place of solitude. For me, honestly, it takes death to learn that because I am Pentecostal in my blood. The only way we experience God as Pentecostals is when we, you know, Bara Mazda, Shara Bara Honda, 300 miles per hour. We speak it fast, we speak it loud, and, and we strain our voice, but sometimes you leave and you're like, man, I shouted, I screamed, I, I overpowered. I mean, it was a lot of hype, but I'm empty, but I'm dry, but my soul is broken, but I am exhausted. I am worn out. I am burned out. For your soul to be repaired, you don't need shouting. You need silence in the presence of God. When we get together, we have to shout. But when we get alone with God, solitude and silence is where the repair and intimacy happens. When we wait on the Holy Spirit. Can somebody say amen? Amen. amen. So the first one is intimacy. The first part is when we wait on the Holy Spirit, He begins to repair us. What happens next was... The Bible says that he put a lamp in that room. The lamp speaks, the Bible says in Proverbs that the lamp of the Lord, the spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord. This is your spirit. Your spirit has no effect on your spiritual life when you don't know Jesus Christ. And to follow your God, like Oprah says, when your God has not been following your God, it will lead you into a rut. To follow your spirit, when your spirit has not been born again, is like following this lamp in the dark. How many of you know this lamp in the dark is not going to give you any illumination and direction? Are you with me? And so until your spirit is born again, your spirit is dead. And therefore to follow your God, or I'm just going to follow what, what, what my, my heart is saying. Your heart is dark, even though it's painted white. It produces no light. And so the Bible says that the spirit of the man is the lamp of the Lord. When we develop intimacy with the Holy Spirit, the second facet of our relationship with the Holy Spirit is to learn His voice. And I want to share with you just practically on how to hear the voice of God. We have to understand, Jesus said, my sheep, they know my voice. He didn't say, my sheep, they only know my words. To know the voice of God is the greatest privilege in life. Because when you know what God wants you to do, you don't have to compete with your neighbor. You don't have to be jealous of someone else because you know what's expected of you. And you know that it doesn't matter what somebody else is doing. What God asks you to do is really what matters in life. Are you with me? To know the voice of the Lord is the greatest treasure in life and to know God's voice is not that difficult. I want to show you something about the lamp. In order for the lamp to shine, the first thing that must happen is the cord has to be connected to the power. And that means intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Whatever you are filled with, you will be led by. Meaning, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you will begin to sense His leading in your life. The Bible says when the Holy Spirit filled Jesus, only then Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit. Jesus was not led by the Holy Spirit until He was filled with the Holy Spirit. The focus is not to hear God's voice. The focus of our life has to be to be filled with God's Spirit. Because when you fill with God's Spirit, you will be able to discern His voice automatically. When I was younger, I prayed and I fasted and I said, God, I want to hear your voice. And I tried to pay attention. But it's actually a lot more simpler if you don't focus on hearing God, but you focus on being filled with God. You'll be able to discern between his voice, your voice, your neighbor's voice, the devil's voice, and the society's voice. 
The same way you discern your voice and your mama's voice. Why? Because you know her. Why? Because you're close to her. And in order to hear the voice of God, you got to be filled with the Spirit of God. That means constantly fill yourself with the Holy Scriptures. Constantly fast. Constantly pray. Constantly fill yourself with memorizing the Bible. Constantly fill yourself with surrounding yourself with believers. Constantly surround yourself in a small group. So you are filled with the Spirit of God. And it will be interesting how the same thoughts came to you before, but now they're not going to be your thoughts. They're going to be Holy Spirit speaking and giving insights and whispers to you that would be leading of the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? Are you with me? Amen. Say amen if you're still here. Amen. Not only the lamp is connected, but I want you to see this. This lamp has to be on a socket for it to produce light. Not only you have to develop a prayer life and an intimacy with the Holy Spirit where you're filled, but the second thing that I believe is very important to hearing the voice of God is that you got to go on the socket of the Holy Scriptures in order for what you hear not to be deception, heresy, and delusion. It's called the Holy Scripture. The Holy Spirit never leads us outside of the boundaries of the Holy Scriptures. Amen. It means the Holy Spirit will not tell you to marry a drug dealer. The Holy Spirit is not going to tell you to go and make money by selling your body on the street. The Holy Spirit is not going to go against the Holy Scripture. Why? Because the author doesn't contradict his writing. He is the author of the Bible. There was 40 writers, but he was the only one author in the Bible. And the Holy Spirit doesn't contradict the Holy Scriptures. Are you with me, church? Amen? And thirdly, this, I believe, and this is very important, is when you start hearing God, Make sure you have some people who cover your voices. I call them mentors and pastors. Because when you start hearing God, you actually can sometimes miss God and end up in a problem. And therefore, you have to have a pastor around you, a home group leader around you, a youth pastor around you, somebody who is older in the Lord, who you can sometimes double check things with and if you're married of course your spouse people will say well if God spoke to me I don't need nobody to approve it I don't doubt the ability that you hear God the only problem is that you have a filter inside of you through which you hear God with and secondly is the Bible says in the New Testament let one or two prophesy and the rest judge interesting if God is speaking why does God give us the right and the command to judge His voice? It's not the voice of God we judge. It's the fact the vessel God is using can be polluted. Have you heard prophets whom God uses powerfully but they're so judgmental? Why? Because the, the, the vessel is judgmental. The Holy Spirit is not going to overpower you. The Holy Spirit will flow through your personality, through your knowledge, through your tradition. The Holy Spirit will flow through you. And therefore, in order to protect your life, always be submitted to your pastor even though God speaks to you. Because if you're not submitted to your pastor, if you're not submitted to the leadership in the church and you develop a prophetic anointing where you start hearing God and seeing visions and all the time, but in your life there is no fruit, you might end up as being a crazy nut, not a spiritual fruit. And the prophetic will quickly slip into pathetic. And very soon you will find yourself not being productive in the kingdom of God. I cannot tell you how many times I felt strongly that the Lord led me to something and I double checked with my wife and my wife beat that out of me quickly. <laughs> double checked with my pastor and my pastor would say, Vlad, pretty sure this is the Lord but I'm not sure this is the right time. Without the covering, your light will blind other people. But with the covering, your light begins to illuminate your life. Can somebody say amen? Somebody say intimacy. Somebody say leading of the Holy Spirit. And we see the third component that this woman provides for the prophet. That she provides for him a chair. A chair speaks of serving and salvation of people. A podium is a platform. It's a public thing. A chair is something that's more personal. A chair is something that's more that connects. I believe that 
after we develop intimacy with the Holy Spirit and we begin to pay attention to His voice in our life, God is not automatically going to give us international ministry. God is not going to give us healing ministry. God is not going to cause people to fall as you pass them by like Catherine Coleman did in the kitchens. God is not going to give you the power to punch people who have a tumor and they'll get up without tumor. But there is a deception that exists in Christianity and that is this. The moment I get close to the Holy Spirit and I begin to hear God's voice, God will right away give me a microphone. A lot of times, God will give you a chair, meaning God will give you opportunity to witness to somebody. God will give you opportunity to pray for somebody and God will give you opportunity for your motives to be tested that you serve somebody. When David was anointed, God didn't give him a crown. He gave him a bear. When David was anointed, God didn't give him a platform. He gave him a lion. That means God will give you problems to solve, people to love, and places to serve. The problem, and I know we've heard this from George yesterday. I know that we heard this from Pastor Slavic the day before. We heard this from Vadim yesterday of, uh, in the morning as well. And I'm going to once again remind you. We are so funny as young people. We cry out to God at conferences and say, Lord, make me a servant. And then we complain when people start to treat us as servants. Why do they treat me like I am a slave? Didn't you ask God for that at the conference? God actually took the prayer seriously. I want to be a bridge to a dying world. Why do you cry when people walk upon you? Did you know that people walk on bridges? Life is like tennis. Those who serve well, seldom lose. The anointing of the Holy Spirit it's not going to give you a platform. It will first test your heart whether you really love people or you love the spotlight. Because many of us, people, it's not what we really love. It's that we love how the reaction from people makes us to be. And the Holy Spirit will test us. You have to understand, I have this written down. Jesus had 132 contexts recorded in the New Testament. Six were in the temple, four were in the synagogue, and 122 was in the main stream of life. That means most of Jesus' ministry where miracles happened did not happen with the microphone. It happened in the house, it happened on the boat, and it happened in the main stream of life. If the anointing of the Holy Spirit does not work outside of the stage, it should never be on the stage. The anointing of the Holy Spirit wants to work in your school. The anointing of the Holy Spirit wants to work in your family. The anointing of the Holy Spirit wants to work in your small group. The anointing of the Holy Spirit wants to work when you go and preach at the homeless shelter. And when you serve food at the homeless shelter. Or when you go and visit local jails and where you serve. The anointing of the Holy Spirit wants to manifest when you have a chair. Even if you don't have a podium. Amen. Amen. I became personally convicted of this as well. Because I started to monitor how many people come to know Christ in our church. And by the grace of God, we see now people coming to know Christ. When I started to look closely on how many people come to our church that I invited. And I was extremely disappointed with the number. I prided myself in the fact that I give altar calls and people get saved. I prided myself in the fact that our ministry reaches thousands now, in the, if not even millions of people through social media. But my, my, I myself, I said, Lord, are you using me as a Christian, not as a pastor, not as a speaker, not as a, a person that is used by God on the stage, but as a Christian, am I being effective evangelist, effective soul winner? And I started to do these three things. I started to pray for impact. I said, Lord, I want you to use me to bring people to Christ as a Christian. I said, Lord, I will live with intention. And number three, I will make room for interruption in my life because God will use you to impact people. But
but it will never be on your schedule. It will always interrupt your schedule. You will go to the gym to work out and there's somebody who bumps into you, starts the conversation, but you really got 20 minutes to finish the, the set so that your chest pops out. It's your legs day and you know your legs are out of shape and you really don't have time to start a conversation plus you don't even have a f phone with you to record their phone number. That's how it usually happens with me and the Lord is saying to my heart and He said Vlad if you're praying for impact and if you are living with intention make room for interruption. Challenge happens with us guys is we are like the Levite and the Pharisee. He was so busy with the work in the temple that he forgot the hurting person that was laying right beside that. Don't get so stuck in the church life that you forget to be a Christian. Don't get so wrapped up in ministry in the church that you forget what it's like to be a follower of Jesus Christ. It's the followers of Jesus that pray, fast, give, evangelize and disciple. Don't ever get so deep and so anointed that you don't need to lead a home group. Why? I am above that. You're not above becoming a Christian and it's Christians who disciple other people. Don't be so out there and so deep that you no longer need to invite your co-workers to church. Why? Because you upgraded from that lifestyle. Never upgrade from being a Christian because you will upgrade into foolishness and craziness instead of the depth with God. Are you with me? Amen. Intimacy with the Holy Spirit leads me to hear the voice of God. Leading the Holy, hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit leads me to serving, loving people and being useful where God wants to use me. I want you to rise to your feet. The third piece, the fourth piece, I'm sorry, is the table. And the table speaks of personal breakthroughs that God wants to do in our life. The woman we read about, she was barren. To be barren in that culture was very embarrassing. It was considered to be cursed if you cannot have children. And what touches me the most is when this woman invited the prophet, never once we see that she had an agenda for the prophet to heal her. You don't see nowhere here where she was waiting for the prophet to get settled and then she slipped a paper under the desk and said, by the way, I can't have kids. Can you prophesy? She didn't do that. She had a problem. It was a real problem. Genuine, authentic problem. I don't know if she gave up. I don't know if she surrendered to her surroundings. But I just know one thing, she did not put the prophet in her house to get a miracle. She put the prophet in her house to honor the prophet. And when the prophet saw, nobody's sending me prayer requests. Nobody's sending me requests to do something for them. He begins to ask her and says, can I do something for you? I want to share with you how to get your prayers answered quickly. Don't pray them. Be honest with yourself. Most of them don't get answered anyway. Now we pray. Why? Pray for me. Pray for me. Come on. We, we all know most of them are not going to get answered at all. There is a principle in Matthew 6 33 that's more powerful than even the power of prayer. When you seek first the kingdom of God, God begins to ask you the question, what do you want? Many of us, we are desperate. Our problems made us desperate and we manipulate God's presence. We manipulate the Holy Spirit and we use the Holy Spirit as a means to get a miracle instead of using a miracle as a means to get to know the Holy Spirit. We are like Israel saying, God, get me out of Egypt. In reality, they didn't really want God. They just wanted freedom. And God was a means to get that freedom. But Moses used the exodus from Egypt as a means to know God. Because when God took too long on the mountain 
Israel worshipped the cow but when God too long, took too long on the mountain Moses waited on God because to Moses God was not a means to a goal God was the goal something happens when you make intimacy with the Holy Spirit your number one goal it numbs your desperation it doesn't remove the problem it just makes your problem not the most important thing in your life yes you're struggling with finances yes maybe there is a pain in your body but you understand that God is bigger than the problem because once you die and you'll be six feet under that problem will not exist God's voice is more important than my issue and God what God wants me to do that is to reach to the lost is more important than something I have in my body that is more important and when I am busy doing these three things God says what do you want and the woman says she says nothing imagine that you have a guy in your house who can fix things with the with the finger he speaks things and they come into existence because God's power in double portion over his, over his life and she says nothing because intimacy with the Holy Spirit kills your desperation desperation is dangerous I know people say get desperate for your miracle personally I believe for the growing mature Christians that is dangerous because when you're desperate for your miracle you become impatient and when you become impatient you always produce Ishmael when you're desperate for your miracle you cannot differentiate between God's supply and Satan's bait when you're desperate for your miracle God is always a means to a goal and when you get the goal God lets get left behind but when you are satisfied in God in spite of your problem God now takes interest in your problem God takes interest in your dream God takes interest in your desires God is the one that says let's make your dreams come to pass you say Lord I give up long time ago God says I know but I take interest in that why because these dreams now are not going to come out of desperation they'll come out of your satisfaction in the presence of God this woman she wasn't desperate she was content and I want you to see something else not only she was not desperate but God solved her problem we're gonna pray in just a moment when you make room for the Holy Spirit you can put the point number two when you make room for the Holy Spirit your problems make room for his power she only made room for the prophet and her problem right away made room for the power of God your problem automatically invites the power of God when your heart invites his presence I pray for my personal needs very very little and sometimes I just tell the Lord God you know what I need why because I know God is not God is faithful and God is good and God loves me and I have people in my life who when they treat me good and they take care of things that matter to me I will go out of my way make sure their needs are met and I'm just a human God is a divine God and he sees my heart if he sees that I am not using I'm not trying to get in bed to get something I'm not hearing his voice to climb out of a situation I'm not trying to serve so I can get promoted when God sees in my heart that I want God for God not for something God says what do you want your wildest dreams I'll make him come true why because I know they won't kill you I know that you'll still glorify me you're not worship me to get something like the mother of the John and the two two kids remember when she came and she was manipulated because she worshiped but she had an agenda her agenda was put my kid on the right and another kid on the left she wasn't really worshiping she was just using worship to get to something a miracle and that's why those miracles are not maintained many times don't use God God came to Abraham and says Abraham I am your reward not Isaac not nations not riches and wealth Abraham I am goal worth pursuing I'll just pray that prayer right now so Holy Spirit I make room for you in my heart and my problems made room for you in my life for your power in Jesus name I just stretch your hands right now just welcome his presence right now 
come Holy Spirit come with your presence come with your glory Holy Spirit we love you right now we want your rest in our life and we want your presence and your power we're gonna pray right now just to have a few more minutes I want to pray for those who are sick but before we do that on Thursday night when Pastor Slavic was preaching I felt a strong impression that there are some people in this room you have a very difficult time getting married and I want to declare that over you this time next year you'll be married that's all it was weird I never got that before but it's for somebody here who you have a problem in this area you have an issue with this area and you put it in God's hands and God is God is God wants to bring a change even this year it's so natural for many people to get married but for you it will take a miracle the same way it's natural for everybody to get a baby but for this woman we read about it took a miracle to get a baby never judge somebody because it comes easy for you what comes by miracle to them some people make money comes in like this for another person to get 2.5 gpa in school it takes a miracle prayer and fasting never judge somebody because it comes easy for you in the area it comes in so so hard for somebody else amen right now we're going to take a moment and pray for those who are sick I know Nathan Morris is gonna pray tonight as well and tomorrow but at the same time each one of us carry measure of God's grace and I know some people God wants to heal today before tonight's service amen every time I pray for people I see people healed and this can happen to you today I don't see everybody healed but I see people come and they receive a healing in their body in the last about four or five months we've been ser seeing serious healings of serious diseases people have problems infections in their blood for 18 years arthritis for 10 years and they couldn't move uh, physically it couldn't do more than just go wake up and not go to gym and none of this stuff and God would heal and all of that would be gone away and today right there where you are standing we're going to pray that the power of the Holy Spirit will glorify the name of Jesus in your body I'm gonna tell you right away you don't have to feel anything you just have to release your faith and your faith is just knowing that God is bigger than your situation he loves you a lot and the spirit lives in you and right now is a time for a miracle you don't have to have big faith to experience a miracle you have to have a big God and you and I already have him can somebody say amen, amen. I'm gonna agree with you with your faith right now and we are going to pray I would ask that you place your hand upon a part of your body where you experience pain whether you experience this pain for a long time or a short time it's your pain and it matters to you it matters to God if it's on your neck on your shoulder on your knees on your ears just place your hand there right now and we are going to agree we are going to pray and the Holy Spirit will do the rest amen say this prayer out loud with me say my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit my body is not for sickness and it's not for disease and right now I take authority over this disease I take authority over this pain over this spirit of infirmity and I command it to leave right now and never come back say oh Holy Spirit touch my pain repair your temple restore your house and I promise that this body will not be used for nothing but your kingdom and your purposes in Jesus name right now Holy Spirit I ask you that you'll move in this auditorium and that you will bring healing when there is disease I ask you right now precious Spirit of God that you will begin to open the ears that have been deaf or half deaf or those who had infections or or hearing problem in Jesus mighty name I ask you that you will pop them open right now in Jesus mighty name I pray for those who have problem with vision right now Lord God for those who carry glasses who cannot see from a distance or up close that you will begin to restore their vision in Jesus mighty name I curse every gastritis every eating disorder right now in the name of Jesus Christ every problem in the stomach every problem with the blood every problem with the fluids every in the neck in Jesus mighty name be healed right now 
every problem in the neck in the lower in the lower back right now I speak your word of healing right now in that part of their body in the name of Jesus Christ precious Holy Spirit I ask you right now that you will defeat every arthritis in the joints every arthritis in the fingers every arthritis in the in the toes in Jesus mighty name let there be healing right now even to those who are watching us on live stream let your presence come right now there let your fire drive away every disease and every sickness in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name in the name of Jesus Christ I want you to right now just raise your hand just release that pain to the Lord come on every hand raised just begin to say Lord I give that pain away right now to you you already took it on the cross it's illegal in my body you took it on the cross it's illegal in my body just release that right now Lord I thank you that you are taking away knee pain I thank you that you are take, taking away back pain I thank you that you're taking away ear infection I thank you that you're taking away migraine headache on the left side thank you Holy Spirit that you are doing that right now in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name we thank you right now I want you to say this with me say Lord Jesus you died on the cross for all my sin and my disease and right now I pronounce that pain that sickness it's illegal and it's leaving my body right now in Jesus name just close your eyes and just bow your head for just a moment Holy Spirit I thank you that you're manifesting your glory right now in our body I thank you that you're restoring us to our original position precious Holy Spirit I thank you that you are touching us in the place where medicine doctors could not cure and restore right now thank you for your gentle hand thank you for merciful touch in Jesus mighty name just receive just receive from the Holy Spirit receive from his generous hand right now in Jesus mighty name uh, I had juvenile rheumatoid arthritis since I was very little and uh, what happened to you during prayer? Uh, well, I felt that God removed this disease from my life and that I no longer have pain in my knees. And right now, there's no pain in your knees? Yep. Come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus. <laughs> Tell us your name, where you're from. I'm Dana, and I'm from Burbank. From Burbank. Uh, what was the problem you were having? Uh, I twisted my knee the other day, and I started having pain, and it hurt to move it. So what happened during prayer? Um, it started getting really hot and it went away after a few moments. Well, come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Tell us your name and where you're from. I'm Camille and I'm from Battlegrounds. And what was the problem you were having? Um, a couple years ago, I had back surgery for scoliosis. And what happened to you during prayer? Uh, during prayer, nothing happened, but then afterwards, um, like I started moving my lower back because that's where a lot of the pain is and there was nothing. Come on, let us put our hands together for Jesus. Can you, can you, for the viewers, can you start moving your body right now and just show us what something you couldn't do before? Um, well, I still can't bend very much, but the pain isn't, isn't there. Come on, let us put our hands together for Jesus. She says that there's no more pain. Wow, what a mighty God that we serve. Tell us your name and know where you're from. Uh, my name is Elijah, and I'm from Vancouver. And what was the problem you were having? Uh, my back, I woke up this morning and it really did hurt and after the prayer um the pain was gone so. come on let us put our hands together for jesus thank you so much tell us your name and where you're from i'm zach and uh before lately i've been having like a stiff back and during that prayer i felt like god relieved it come on let us put our hands together for jesus thank you so much zach <laughs> tell us your name and where you're from i'm from uh my name is lloyd i'm from uh Kelso, I'm part of the Mountain Ministry Program. I, uh, for years, I've had knee and joint issues since I was a kid. I did football. One of the problems was my ACL, my meniscus, my knee. And I'm actually able to move it on this one. I still have pain in this one. But so well, what did God do for you during this prayer? I uh, asked for my knee to be healed, and I can actually move it up and down with, and without having any pain. Come on, let us put our hands together for Jesus. That is so awesome. Come this way, man. Tell us your name and where you're from. Hey, I'm Mike. I'm from Chehalis, Washington. I'm a part of Mountain Ministries in Kelso, Washington. And what did God do for you today? 
Um, I had pain in the base of my neck and my shoulder, and it turns into debilitating headaches. So, I mean, that's what would have happened next. And it was uh, like there was a heating pad on my neck. It got really warm, and it's gone. And everything's gone. No more pain in your... It's gone. Gone. Come on, let us put our hands together for Jesus. Tell us your name and where you're from. Uh, my name is Mike. I'm from Hillsborough, Oregon. I'm also part of the Mountain Ministries program. What did God do for you today? Um, so I hurt my back really bad uh, working in a warehouse, um, fractured and tore a bunch of my muscles, and it constantly has pain. Um, sometimes my wife will have to help me sit up in the morning and stuff out of bed, and it's just something I constantly deal with. And standing there, it's the same thing. It was like a heating pad was put on my back, and it's limber and it's usually so now you're moving your back and there's no more pain no no more pain come on let us put our hands together for jesus christ your name and where are you from evelyn from walla walla and what did god do for you today um i'd been having i used to have kind of problems with my shoulder but lately i had been for some reason waking up the last few mornings feeling just kind of pain in my shoulder and like my elbow my arm just overall felt kind of like just in pain and what did god do for you today um, I wasn't even specifically praying for my arm. I didn't like think about that. But when Pastor Vlad said to test the area that was hurting, I decided to try out my arm and I didn't feel any pain. Turning it. Come on, let us put our hands together for Jesus. Welcome, where are you from and uh, what God do for you? I'm Mount, from Mount Ministries, Sandra Stands. I wasn't able to move my foot. It was like really stiff. And now, I don't know, I'm able to move it. Literally. Can you move it for us, please? It's stiff. And I was able to walk down the aisle just now. Come on, let us put our hands together for Jesus Christ. And come. Tell us your name and where you're from. Desiree Bales from Rainier, Oregon. And it didn't happen this time. I was healed in the first service. Well, for a moment, he said there's healing going on right now. And if I stand up too long, it hurts to bend over really bad. And I felt absolutely nothing. But this time, it's my daughter. Well, let us put our hands together for Jesus. And tell us what did God do for you? Um, my stomach has been hurting for some reason, and we went to, like, the doctors, and no one can find anything what was wrong, but we were praying, and afterwards, I didn't feel anything. Wow, let us put our hands together for Jesus Christ. <laughs> Welcome, can you tell us your name and where you're from? Uh, Crystal Horn, from, uh, Kelso. And what did God do for you today? I believe in healing, <laughs> and, uh... I've been getting like chest pains and um, stomach issues to sleep problems, but I just want that healed and I believe it can happen. Amen. Let us put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Thank you. <laughs> Tell us your name and where you're from. Uh, Slavic from Oregon and uh, I had shoulder pain last summer. I popped out my shoulder and uh, ever since just test problems sleeping, um, shoulder would just randomly pop out. and. Uh, during prayer, I just felt like a tingling and strength in my shoulder, and I could move it with uh, no pain. So, Come on, let us put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Thank you. Your name and where you from? Uh, my name is Stan. I'm from uh, Clackamas, Oregon. Um, so I've been re having like weird problems with my knees. Like when I move them side to side, they would crack, and it doesn't feel normal. And lately, it's been causing pain. But... Uh, after like the prayer and stuff, I just decided to try to crack them again, and they felt normal again. Come on, wow, let us put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Thank you. Tell us your name and where you're from. My name is Montana Padilla, and I'm from Silverton, Oregon, and I had a foot problem. Uh, I don't know what I did to it, but it hurt really bad, but it doesn't anymore, thanks to our Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus. This is so awesome. Tell us your name and what's the problem you're having. My name's Johnny, and I'm from Denver, and uh, he called out left side, the pain on the left uh, side of the head, and I had occipital tendinitis. And I felt like warmth, and it's I'm healed. So, come on, let us put our hands together for Jesus. This is so awesome. Tell us your name and where you're from. Uh, Alina, and I'm from Camas. I and what did God do for you today? Uh, I've been struggling with for two years back problems from lifting heavy things, and I felt this like heating pad as well on my back, and it's still warm. So I feel everything like coming together in my back right now. Wow, let us put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Tell us your name and where you're from. I'm Andre from Auburn, Washington. What did God do for you today? I've had lower back pain for many years and I felt God heal me today. Come on, let us put our hands together for Jesus Christ. 
Thank you for watching this content. I hope this was a blessing to you. If you're like me and you like to click on things, click on this, subscribe to our channel, and the content will come to you every time we post it. And remember, the best is yet to come.